Uh, hello, good morning, good afternoon, welcome. I'm very pleased to be joined by Axel Roma. Axel is the head of uh, aviation at OMV, which is um, Austria's oil major. So welcome, Axel. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot for having me. Thanks. So you're going to be speaking at the SAF Congress, the Sustainable Aviation Futures Congress, which is fast approaching 7th to the 9th of June uh, 2023 in Amsterdam. A lot to talk about, but uh, I think first maybe to set the scene and, and, and give us some of your background. You obviously come to come to the fuels industry or the oil industry via via the aviation industry. So maybe could you give us a little bit of your, back, your background first, please? Yes, sure. I'm already looking forward to, to join the conference in, in two weeks, um, representing OMV, as you just mentioned, OMV is an Austrian, uh, the biggest public listed industrial company of uh, Austria, more than 20,000 employees. The core region of the company actually is where our refinery sits, that's in Austria, in uh, Germany and in Romania, but we also have business in the surrounding countries like Czech Republic, Slovakia and uh, Hungary. Only itself uh, is considered as an integrated oil and gas and chemicals company, but it's in the, um, in the period of transition to become a leading provider of innovative and sustainable fuels, chemicals and, uh, and materials and is uh, striving for yeah, getting the role or leading role in a circular economy. I mean, mm -hmm. this topic circular economy and the role in a sustainable aviation business, we're going to discuss in more detail. But I mean, yeah, you mentioned it. I'm, my background is aviation, actually. I joined OMB uh, last year in September as the head of aviation, but I started my career on the airline side. I was managing the fuel management of Air Berlin, the former German airlines airline for almost uh, 10 years. Mm -hmm. So I started there after my university, got to know the, the physical jet uh, tendering. I was part of the, of the hatching team for some time, uh, had the pleasure to set up the reporting of the ETS uh, to the competent authorities and uh, yeah, scaling up the, the fuel business in the way the airline grew from when I joined 30 aircraft to almost 180 aircraft. And wow. uh, yeah, what I like a lot, I was a, a customer of, uh, of OMB. So basically I knew that uh, that company from our fuel business in, in Vienna and Munich airport. And um, yeah, that basically when I got the opportunity to join OMB, I said, okay, that's definitely a good company to work for. Yeah. And it's a perfect uh, timing to join the industry. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, I didn't realize Air Berlin had grown to, to such a large fleet of 180 aircraft. That certainly is um, obviously a big consumer of, of, of oil. Um, I guess we, we've seen now the Refuel EU Act um, just, just recently passed or in the process of, of being finalized. It's, a, for me, a, you know, a turning point or inflection point, certainly in terms of the, the SAF industry. So what, what are some of your thoughts around um, around the industry, where we are, and, and what are the challenges that you see, given your your, your background, both in, in aviation and also now on the fuel supply side? Yeah, well, I would see that the major challenge is, as, uh, as we know, is the aviation industry that accounts for roughly 3% of all global CO2 emissions. And I've seen comments that it could be more than 20% by 2050 if we do not uh, decarbonize now. So actually there is the strong need to start to decarbonize. And we at OMV, we uh, consider SAF as a retail solution in the near to, old, to medium term to do so. Hydrogen for sure is the future. Electric uh, have, might have future potential in aviation as well. But the, the, the SAF, the advantage of the SAF um, is that it leads immediately to a CO2 reduction when it's blended uh, with jet. And this is what we are currently doing in our refinery in, uh, in Vienna, that we can use the existing fuel infrastructure. I mean, aircraft engines are good to go to use uh, the, the SAF. And um, as we are using uh, use cooking oil as feedstock, we don't have any uh, competition for, for the land use uh, when we extract the, the, fuel, uh, the, the feedstock for the stuff. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's the main limitation around expanding you know, bio-based bio um, bio -based fuels for, for aviation is, is, is impacts on land use and, and yeah. 
Absolutely, yeah. And uh, here, I think for our production in this refinery, the SAF production, uh, we have a, we can source the, the, the feedstock locally. And yeah. uh, the refinery is connected via pipeline directly to the to the airport, so CO2 is a uh, um, yeah reduced to the maximum as we can for for now. Our refinery in uh, let's say in the catchment area of Munich is not reducing uh, producing stuff at the moment, mm -hmm. but uh, when it will happen in the upcoming years, there's also a pi direct pipeline connection to the airport. And uh, co-processed stuff what uh, we are producing um, has a greenhouse emission reduction for uh, more than 90%. And uh, definitely this is something what we can do now, but there are many more projects in the, in the pipeline where we would, where we need or want to contribute to the decarbonization of the aviation business. Yeah. And how, how much more are you going to be able to grow um, the sort of pr production off, off the current sources? I mean, you used cooking oil is obviously a limited amount. Are you looking at other sources as well? Absolutely. I mean, our target is that we have a stuff production of 700,000 tons in 2030. And to my understanding, as of today, we don't have the infrastructure, right? As I said, we are only producing stuff in one of our three refineries. Uh, but uh, if it comes to the feedstock for the time being, we would not a be able to produce such amount of uh, of stuff. And therefore, it's really like the, the, the availability of the feedstock is, let's say, creates the, the biggest headache in our company. And therefore, we uh, have already implemented a strategic sourcing program, which enable us to fulfill our, our self-set targets over the next years. Yeah. And and then beyond beyond I guess the SAF we've seen in the regulation the beginning of, of you know definition of, of a com e fuels component. What are your thoughts there? Yeah, I mean we we are also um, uh, part of our uh, projects in the PTL area of the business. And um, yeah, many more projects were to increase, let's say, our footprint in in the SAF uh, business because. Um, only itself, um, I think that's uh, very interesting. We put ourselves uh, our purpose. So we defined our purpose in, in that area and it's uh, reinventing essentials for sustainable living. Mm -hmm. So actually to become a sustainable company and to create a sustainable future, we said, okay, we need to rethink how we would like to produce and consume our resources. So actually it's more about to give back more than we take. And for that, we in Omi, we are pretty much focused on having the right mindset for this uh, sustainable future. So minimize pollution and waste, reuse materials, shift to low carbon energy. And therefore our major uh, strategy, it's called Omi 2030, is to become a leading player in the in the in the circular economy yeah. so we would like to become net uh, zero um, in 2050 at the latest yeah. with the before mentioned strategy 2030 we defined our targets and out of this we broke it down to the aviation business and that's uh, where we can how we come to the 700,000 tons of stuff which we will produce in 2030 yeah it's a lot of a lot of stuff not, not a lot of time um so i'm sure you're going to be very busy um, so yeah, it's been fascinating to, 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 to speak to you. And I mean, in, in, in terms of the, um, I guess one final question around, around the airlines and, and what, what are you seeing, um, their, their appetite for, um, adopting SAF, obviously they, they have to, um, uh, follow the regulations, but do you think they're going to start to, to, to be able to, um, uh, increase, uh, usage and, and offer green premium, premium products and help to further develop the market beyond the compliance market. Mm -hmm. What I realized in the, my first nine months at OMI that um, at least I'm talking in the same time as I'm talking to, let's say, the procurement or the fuel manager, I'm also talking to a sustainability manager of the airlines, I think, which is a very good uh, sign. So there are the resources available to work on the concepts um, and to fill their their mandates also in 225. So this is uh, this is very good. However, um, I would say those are the challenges beside the, um, the availability of feedstock. It's also about the price. I mean, uh, SAF so far uh, roughly three times more expensive than the conventional jet fuel. And here, definitely 
for the future, we need to be aware of that. We need to share the cost of uh, the cost of uh, SAF across the entire aviation value chain. So it cannot be that only the consumer pays uh, the bill or the airline or the fuel supplier. I think uh, we need to have this eco ecosystem um, yeah, set up in a, in a way that the SAF will become a sustainable product. Yeah, understood. Well, as I said, fascinating to, to speak to you, Axel. We look forward to, to hearing more in, in Amsterdam in a, in a few weeks' time and, and following the progress of, of OMV as you start to develop your, your you know, increasing um, SAF production um, facilities and, 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 and indeed on, on the full path to, to decarbonization and, and uh, being a circular economy company. So many thanks for, for, for speaking to me today. Thank you very much. Looking forward to see you in Amsterdam. Cheers. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.